Wrong floor. What's up everybody welcome to real time for the real everyday movie fan i am of course josh williams thank you so much for joining me here today because i am giving you my real time review of godzilla king of the monsters now godzilla king of the monsters was written by uh, michael daughtry and uh, zach shields and was directed by michael daughtry himself it stars via farmiga um, sorry kyle chandler Millie Bobby Brown, uh, Bradley Whitford, Sally Hawkins, and Ken Watanabe. You know, there's a whole slew of us. I know Osei, Osei Jackson Jr. is in there and a bunch of a bunch of other people, but they are the main people with the most dialogue. So we'll just leave it at that. So coming out of this movie, I, 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 okay, I don't understand some of the critics' reactions to this movie. I, I, I will say it's kind of taking me aback a little bit now there are some problems with the movie for sure but i just i feel like for this one they need to get the stick out of their butts i i don't know i just I, I, it's not a perfect film by any means please don't get me wrong there still has some problems with it which we'll talk about here in a little bit but i just it does not deserve because right now it sits at 39 percent on rotten tomatoes which i don't understand it does not deserve that low of a score and for me my score i'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I had a good time watching it. There's some glaring problems with it. I had it initially at six and a half, but just the the overall action of the movie is what I, was probably my first positive of the film. Is It just really captures you, and the visual effects are outstanding. I mean, if you thought God, the first Godzilla uh, special effects were great, these are m a b way above and beyond what you could expect. It just it kind of blew me away with how good they were able to capture not only the action of the monsters within the cities, but still able to capture the scope of them. Cause that, uh, I read one of the people said they didn't really capture as good as the first one did as the first guys that were able to capture the, the scope and how big these creatures are, which I still think they did a great job at doing. So there's quite a few scenes where you still realize how big these characters are i mean these these monsters are and i just i really really appreciated that that they kept to that kind of trend of where the first one went and just kind of carried it over but added more to it and that was the other part for me that kind of that i guess is bothering me so much about what's been going on with the art with the critics reactions and everything like that is that there's now there's too much of Godzilla. It, there's not it, it takes away the spectacle, or there's just too much monster fights going on, and too many monsters for us to care, you know, for us to latch on to. Which the last part I can maybe see, because there were a lot of new kaiju's that were introduced that you don't get to know about, but at the same time, they're just there to be as a device to show the scale of how many creatures are out there. They don't necessarily need to know them. You still get to really. You still really get to know Rodan. You still get to really know Mothra, Ghidorah, and Godzilla. And you really, you really hone in more on Godzilla's character and Mothra's actually for quite a bit of the film. And it just kind of bothers me that before in 2014 film, which by the way I love the 2014 film. I, I think it's very underrated for a lot of people who are saying it's just okay. I think it's the exact opposite. I think it paid great homage to the first film as far as its techniques go and filmmaking techniques. And I think this one did the same thing. So I just kind of bothered me that before there was not enough of him, but now that there's more of him, there's too much. It just it it makes me think of the time. It makes me think of the scene. Like to me, I just want to grab all like all the critics who are saying this and just you know do what kind of um, what Ryan Gosling did in the Notebook and just screaming. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? So that it just it kind of 
bothers me a little bit, I guess, in that sense. But besides that, let's just we'll get back to what I kind of think about the film. And one of the biggest things I also liked about the film was the score. The score was euphoric. It, it and it also at the same time it, it gave an epic grand scale feeling to it that I really gravitated towards. I'm all, I'm probably gonna end up downloading the the soundtrack and listen to quite a bit of them. And there even is one of the the main score. It it, it kind of plays into the first one because the first one play uh, the first theme of the 2014 played paid homage to the original theme of Godzilla. And this one does that, and but adds more to it, gives it a more epic scale, epic sound to it. I guess you could say. I just loved it. I, I absolutely fell in love with the score. That I, you know, I guarantee you guys just go out and listen to it by itself. You'll feel the same way. But there's some other things too I really liked. I, 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 I really loved Millie Bobby Brown. This most some people said like I'm uh, on the podcast where Casey, uh, my friend Casey's just another movie show. We did his podcast the other day, and he talked about. I talked about how I really loved Millie Bobby Brown. I think for her uh, debut, she did a great job for her, you know, th- uh, theater like a movie debut because she's only really been in Strange Things. That's all we really know her from. I thought she did a really good job of portraying this character that she was given. Now you can say whether you liked the character or not because she was kind of a damsel daughter in distress kind of thing. That's up to you. I still felt like what she was given was really great. And um, along with Via Farmiga and Kyle Chandler, they were her, played her parents. They both did a good job as well. Now, some of the things I didn't necessarily like. Uh, hang on, here I got that. Oh, that's uh, Bradley Whitford's character. Uh, he really. He's what brought down pretty much the score it is now. And it almost. He, I wouldn't say he ruins the film for me because there's so much to love about it. But he, anytime he opened up his mouth, my God, Zilla. he, it just made me kind of do that kind of <sighs> that number that you just kind of hit your head, or you just kind of roll your eyes, because he was supposed to be the comedic relief. He, he's the comedic relief in the film, but with this kind of movie, how it had a serious tone to it, and it, it still treated itself as a fun monster film. I felt like they could have taken out him at completely and just replaced him with a normal character and it would have been a more effective in some of the scenes because there's some of the scenes where you're there's just like epic moment and the one character will say a line and it's if he stuck with that line and just that it would have like it would have really what's the, what's the word I'm looking for it would have really been effective for the moment but instead he would you know Bradley Whitford's character would say something and it would just completely ruin the moment. And I hate when films do that. When you have a serious moment for a film that could be very effective and dramatic and another character just says something off the cusp that's supposed to be comedic relief. It just really, it really irritates the shit out of me. I, sometimes it can be good, but if, if it's going for that type of tone, I felt like they were going for a more serious tone, but instead... Uh, I don't know if maybe the studio did it or whatnot, but there was like, oh, we need a little more comedy in the movie, a little more fun. You, yeah, no, you didn't have to do that. I felt like the first, the first out of fourteen, proven you don't have to have that and still be a good film. So that was to me one of the biggest problems of the movie. And then some of the last bits were just kind of. There were certain moments in the second act where you get a lot. You know, second act in towards the end, towards the beginning as well, where you get a lot of exposition, verbal exposition. Now. I'm okay with that to a point because with this kind of movie, I feel like you need it. You know what I mean? Like you, you really need to be able to talk about the film and know and kind of introduce us to some of these monsters and so we know what's kind of going on. But when it gets to the point where sometimes they'll go a little overboard and it gets a little nause- nauseum. And that's the part where you just kind of, it's all about a balance. And it's all about, persp- it's all about what you, um, what you think is enough or not enough. For me, it just it felt it crossed that line of having a little too much exposition. Where we, I felt like the director could have really told the story and kind of told us the audience through verbal, or through a visual exposition, or just through the story itself somehow I, in some different ways. I feel like that would have been a more effective way. But other than that, I can still highly recommend you guys check this movie out. It is well worth your time. It's just a summer blockbuster film. If you love seeing Godzilla on the screen, you're gonna find so much enjoyment out of it. Him fighting Ghidorah and fighting Rodan. It's a lot of fun. You just shove some popcorn in your face and have a good time. 
But that'll do it for me today, folks. Thank you very much for watching. What did you think of Godzilla King of the Monsters? That's most important. Leave your comments in the section below. Let me know whether you liked it or not. And by the way, guys, I didn't say in the beginning, sorry that this is getting up so late. I'm going to say it in quite a few videos that we, me and my wife just had our daughter a few weeks ago. And she is, last couple weeks she's had some tummy troubles and she hasn't been feeling too well. So it's been hard for me to get in the studio. But I'm going to get caught up on all these for you guys today. Hopefully throughout the week you'll see some more reviews come out and I'll say it through every video. So you guys know. But thank you so much for your patience and we appreciate your support. Because, you know, I am a father now and those duties are very important to me. But I really appreciate your guys' support. But also, if you like what you watched, again, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel so you can see more of our various content in the future. Also, like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Stardust. And the links are in the description below. That's all I have for today. Again, I'm Josh Williams. And thank you for keeping it real with Real Time. Oh,